if I'm trying to plan something, especially like an event like that, how, as, as the person who's putting on, how do you want to, how would you want to feel if you weren't the person that was putting on, but you were the person that was going to the event, right? So I look at it through that lens of, okay, I'm going to go to this event and I want, this is what I want to get out of it. This is how I want to feel when I leave. This is how I want to talk about it when I leave. These are the things I'd like to experience. This is the kind of swag I hope I'm going to get. And I kind of plan it for that experience, right? The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. PC family, today I'm joined by the mastermind behind the Juggernaut Conference of Creative South. I'm talking about Mike Jones, 281-330-8004. Hit Mike Jones up on the low because Mike Jones yeah, about slow. I don't know how many people <laughs> even know that reference, but regardless, oh, that's man. you always come to mind with that. Who? So Mike... Uh, man, I still get that once a week. It's, you have to get crazy. that. It's crazy. You, you have to get that. That was like uh, my, my childhood or like my teenage years for sure. So... Uh, so good to finally get oh, man, you I'm on here, man. man. Yeah. How you doing today? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Thanks for having me on here. And it's it's funny you opened up with that. I met that guy one time. He came to Columbus and to shoot a Super Bowl commercial for a local guy. And I ended up getting to know where he was going to be and met him and and did a photo for Instagram, just kind of like making fun of our names. And you got to like, meet Mike Jones. Yeah. Like so if you go to my Instagram and like scroll down way in, in the feed, it, it's there. But it was just funny because you know, everywhere I go, like people still do that reference to this day. And like, that was, that was popular in like, what, 2005? I mean, that was like over 10, know. 15 yeah, years ago, bit, for sure, so man. I was in like high fun. school when yeah. all that chopped and screwed stuff, but I'm a hip hop yeah. junkie. So, <laughs> um, but a lot of people who may not know you listening, like that's going to drive funny. that connection. So um, for, sure. for those who don't know you give a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourself, who you are and what you do today. Oh man, I, you know I'm, I'm Mike Jones, and I'm uh, I'm six foot three and four hundred pounds of whatever. I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> the quick and dirty is I do design, and I run a, a a creative conference called Creative South, and I run a studio outside of my day job called Surf Studios, and I have a family, a wife, four kids, dog, house. You know. The, the whole nine yards, like that kind of stuff. I don't know. That, that's what you're looking for. That's, that's it. Like That's what you got. You're on because you're the epitome of a side hustler. You know, you, you vibe to the show. Not only are you at your day job right now, probably around your lunchtime, but yep. you do so many other pivotal things that not only like scratch your creative itch so you can create the work you want to be known for, yep. but also builds community and makes an impact that like will ripple far after you're not on this planet anymore. And I think that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Like we get paid to do something we love, right? So that's a bone, that's a win automatically. If that's all you got to do, fantastic. But I feel like as humans, we're put here on this planet to do more than that. <clears throat> I feel like we need to serve each other. And we we a lot of times people just don't because you know they, they there's an excuse behind it or they don't see the real value in it. But like and sometimes if you just set yourself aside and say, you know what, I'm gonna do this for nothing on in return, I'm gonna I'm going to serve this organization or I'm going to serve this nonprofit or I'm going to take my talent and do something else with it that helps other people. I think that's huge. And that's why my studio is called Serve Studios, right? Like I based it off of that whole scripture of 1 Peter 4.10, where it's basically saying, you know, take your talents God gave you, serve other people with them. And and that's what I want to keep doing. And that's my side hustle. That's what brings me the most joy is, is serving others. And, you know, yeah. Do you get paid for it sometimes? For sure. I mean, that's great. But it's not, if I didn't, I would still do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it doesn't even matter what your faith is based in, like just service in general. Serve, 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 man. Something Here. bigger than yourself. That's, that's what the, I guess what I want to like teach is, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it's a, uni, a universal principle, I guess, is what I want to say, you know? So yeah, I, and it's, it's down to the, to the, um, you know, maybe it's not an organization, or maybe it's just like you're serving like your brother. Right. Like somebody that's, you know, close to you or a sibling or a kid or um, like for me, I love when, you know, I, I mentored three or four high school kids over the year um, who were trying to get their senior projects done. You know, yes, yeah, extra time away from my kids and this and that. But it's also I'm investing in our design future. Right. You got to give back to the, 
the folks that are coming up after you, because when you were coming up, somebody gave into your career and your life. And I feel like you should always just keep paying that forward. Mm, pay it forward for sure. So like, tell us more about, before we dive into like creative South and everything, um, <clears throat> tell us more about surf studio. So you got your day job, but like what's surf studio about, you know, what's your clientele? Um, is it just you? Are you outsourcing contracting? Like what's, what's that kind of business model that you, you operate? Sure, for sure. It's a- always, uh, always outsource, right? Like I'm, I, it's me, but then I got my buddy, Matt, that I went to high school with. We, I've known him for years and years. Dear friend of mine. Um, if I've got photography needs, that's my first go-to, right? He's been doing photography for as long as I've been doing design and he lives down the street from me and he knows like what I'm looking for. So we can always meet up together and take, you know, kind of collaborate that way. But then, you know, I've got my, my buddies that are on the West coast. I got buddies in Texas and Florida, Atlanta, you know, like I try to, to reach out. Like if I see a need, I get a client that says, Hey, you know, I need X, Y, Z and I can only do X, but I know that I can help them find good partners with Y and Z. And I'm going to reach out to a Scotty Russell and say, yo, dude, I need some hand lettering. I need, you know, there's all these different people that you can call on that have talents. And that's why you build, you're building relationships instead of just networking. Like I want to have really good working relationships with my friends. So those are the folks I'm calling on first. So for serve, it's, it's basically, I, I, you know, I concentrate on branding and illustration, lettering, that sort of thing. But if somebody comes in and says, Hey, I need a full package. I need this. I need web. I need whatever all right, cool. Let's go work with Unfold or let's go work with, you know, Nick Slater or whoever. Let's, let's pick somebody and get some folks in there that can do what um, I can't do well. And I think that's just, uh, that's how you should run a business. I feel like there's two huge takeaways there. Know what you're good at, play to your strengths, delegate yep. or outsource your weaknesses. And then the power of relationships. I know the quote, your net worth is equal to your network. And there's truth in that, but I really like how you say it, which is how I go about it. It's a better non non sleazy philosophy of relationships are everything, communities everything. And like I'll talk about it in the intro, but like you in general and Creative South changed everything for me. Like I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for like me getting uncomfortable finding this conference through people on Instagram avatars that I followed. And then just taking a chance, pitching my day job, going out to the conference, hugging you on the last day of the stage. Like that was a life-changing experience. And my best friends and my closest colleagues have all stemmed from people I've met at conferences like this and become relationships. When I get laid off from my job, when I get laid off from my job last (laughs) November, I can immediately hit like 10 people up. I can go and lean on and get advice from, you know? Or work or, uh, you know, yeah, there's all these different things you can do for that with that, the group you've built up. And I'm in the same boat as you. My like I have, you know, I have my my pastor says like you have this target of of basically like these these different circle layers of friend groups, right? Like you have your core family, which is like your, you know, your wife and kids and your grandma and your, you know, your immediate family. And then outside of that, you've got like the group that I'm building, right? They're not acquaint, they're they're like my inner circle. Extended in family. Circle, it's your extended family, right? So it's not like you're just doing business with them. You're doing like like Noah Noah Allen says he's like you're doing life with them right like you're you're um you know their families you know their hopes and dreams and fears and you work with all of these things and and I'm just like you like I have some friends from high school that I keep up with that are dear dear friends of mine that are family like that but the 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 core group of people that are that family to me now stem from relationships I've built over the last ten years from Creative Sound. Yeah, that's that that's nuts? wild. Like it's nuts. It is why, like, it's that rippling effect. Not only are you this little seed of an idea, which I want to get to, of creating this conference has had such an impact on thousands and thousands of lives. And now I get to go and give back and preach about this conference and then take what I've learned and the relationships that I've leveraged and built to like keep that impact going. Like, it's powerful, yeah, I, dude. I, I appreciate that. And it, those words mean a lot to me. So thank you of for course. saying it. Of course, man. So speaking of year 10, freaking decade, bro. Like, wow, this will be year four out of five. I found it in 2015. I had to miss last year due to a kiddo situation, but, um, we'll let it slide. Yeah, that that's (laughs) life. That's life. But I'm I'm back this year. I could not miss it, but like year 10. So for those who've been living under a rock, tell us, what Creative South is and like the backstory of it. How did this start? 
Oh man, I, I and I'm I'm actually uh, been my team is actually forcing me to get on stage this year and talk, so that'll be interesting. But um, I did that. I said that just to jab at them right now. But um, no, I mean it. It started out of I, I went to uh, there was an awesome conference that just was in its second year um, called Weapons of Mass Creation Fest in Cleveland, Ohio, and I had heard about it through Jeff Finley, who had started that whole movement because I was a huge uh, fan of Go Media and like their arsenal packs. I don't know if you remember back then, like Go Media had this like thing of selling these packs, these arsenal packs of vector art you could buy and use them for your different things. And, and they were doing, a, they were kind of doing all these, these new things like that in the world of design. So I was following them and um, I had just saw a post about this conference in Ohio. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go up there and see what it's about. And the company I was working for at the time said, you know, yeah, we'll send you up to this event. So they sent me up there. And um, I think back then it was like 20 speakers on the, on the docket, 20 designers in a show and like 40 punk, like 20, 20, 30, 40. I don't remember. Let's say 30, 30 punk bands in a, in a, like playing throughout three days. And it was massive, right? It was a festival. So like throughout the whole weekend, I think they had like 1800 people come through the, the event because it was, it was, you know, it was from all walks. You had your designers there to hear the talks and see the show and all that. But then you had people who were just came because they just wanted to drink beer and listen to music. And the vibe was just this festival vibe. And it was like something I had about being from the South and going up there and seeing it. It's like, wow, oh, like, this is crazy. This is, this is really, this, and, but I felt there was a welcoming factor to it that felt right. And so prior to that, I had only been to a W Max, like, I don't know, mm. five or six times. The that was intimacy my, that, is kind of right, not really it's there. Gone. But it's, but but the impact of the size of an event like that and what you brought home as far as like so software and learning and, and, and stuff like that was great. But the, yeah, the intimacy part was missing. There wasn't like a whole lot of community um, that you took away from a, a sized event like that. So I you know that was my only experience with conferences. So when I got back from weapons, um, I was just sitting around going, and I was at the time I was, I was ma the manager of Columbus's, um, Adobe users group back when our user groups were, were pretty big. So I was managing that and we were meeting like once, a, once every other month or once a month, um, or, you know, every so often to, to talk about software. And we'd have like, I remember one time I got Fraser Davidson in the mix to, to talk to us over, you know, uh, streaming and, and we would do something like that. But then. When I got back from the college, like there's gotta be more to this. Like, why are, why can't we have an event here? Like I travel to these things, like Columbus is a cool town, it's it's growing, the downtown scene's growing. Uh, why can't we do it? So I, I hit up a buddy of mine and he had a logo um that he wasn't using at the time. And um this was right before this was before we called it Creative South, right? So you you think back to that. Um it and I said, Hey, I want to do this thing here, but I don't want to do it by myself, like you want to help out. He's like, Yeah, so. We started it up and it was the, uh, the artist roundup and I had Jeff Finley and Von Glitch go come down to Columbus. We had no money. We had no idea what was going on. We had it at a double tree hotel and we had some swag made up, like some hats and t-shirts from a local place. And we got a few copies. Adobe gave us some software to give away and Von gave us some stuff to give away. And, and we were like, okay, look, we got to fly down here. And we got to pay for one night hotel stay and we got to figure something out. Well, we didn't even feed them, dude. Like it was, we had, <laughs> we had no idea what was going on, no money. And so we, um, we, I think tickets were like 25 bucks back then, like when we first started doing it. So all, I got, and it was in 2010, it was when I went to, to, um, weapons and that, that's the year I started planning this. And, and then so, Artist Roundup happens. The both of those guys speak. We have a half a day event. It was a fantastic time. And um, how many people did you get at that? Forty five people showed up. Not that's pretty that's decent not, for like. Dude, that's not bad. Totally, for how us, how quick? So, how many months did it take you to just throw it together? Oh, I mean, so that would have been in August, and it happened in March. Okay. So not you know and that now it didn't we didn't get planning in august but like i got back from weapons in august and, and you had like, the seed idea I thinking about it and yeah. then i think you know like december like all right we're gonna pull the trigger and then like we started setting stuff up and i think we spent like maybe a month of really planning you know of like trying to figure out what to do 
and now it takes a whole year to do it. But um, a whole squad of goons behind you to help, man. Goons. But but yeah, we had forty five people show up, and I just remember that you know I'm looking at my buddy, and I'm just going like, "Where the stuff?" Like we yes, we did this thing. Like we were so stoked about it. So um, we we left there exhausted after a half a day of <laughs> doing all this stuff. And I it's just, it's like, just funny oh hearing you. God. It's here. It's funny <laughs> hearing so you wild. say, "I was exhausted." I was exhausted. for a half a day compared to where it, it is now. Like, it felt like so much stuff <clears throat> to do. You know, you got to get there and set tables, and but that then you're doing. Well, yeah, we do a, a ton of it now. But like, I've learned you start learning as you put it on. Like, okay, well, who can I hire to do this, or who can I get to help here and there? But yeah, you know, after that day, I just remember going home with my wife, and I was like, Karen, this. That was intense, but man, we did this thing and, and we were excited. So it went from that to, uh, okay, well, how do we make it bigger next year? What do we do? You know, and so we're like, well, all right, it's not going to be the artist roundup. So let's, let's make it some kind of design conference name that, that feels more corporate to try to get corporate money, you know, and that was our mindset. Like, how can we get corporate sponsored? Well, it has to sound corporate So that was a stupid idea, <laughs> but it, it became a uh, Columbus creative. Uh, design conference right and then uh so we had four let's see yeah we had four speakers that year we um we had it in this really nice uh, uh loft at this uh bar and it had uh, we catered lunch which was never done we had swag again for everybody and it was a whole day long and 65 people showed up and we were just excited that we did and we had a, a few local sponsors and like i think adobe gave us some a couple thousand bucks and and it helps, you know, we, we were able to do a little more and it was the same thing, you know, you're oh, so fun. I want to do it again. But I, you know, so the, after that year, I was like, look, if we don't go, if, because it was taking so much time away from what I was already doing, which was my normal nine to five. And then also my family, I decided like, look, if we don't go big, I'm out, mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here and I'll be fine with that. I did it. I, whatever, we can keep going because it was always just something I wanted to do for fun. It was, it was, how do we do this fun? And how can I invite people that I want to meet to speak? And that's how, that was how I started picking speakers. At, at first was like, oh, you would Mackie Saturday. Yeah, let's invite him. I want to meet that guy. You're like that kind of, that kind of stuff. And, and so that's how speakers got chosen. And um, the third year when, when we transitioned into Creative South's name, um, uh, I had 20 speakers on the hook. Like I had already called 20 different people. I was like, we're going big this year. We have 20 speakers in the lineup. I don't have any money, but whatever, it'll, I'll figure it out. God will, God will take care of it. And he did. And 20 speakers on the hook, no money in the bank. I had the same venue. We split level. We were going to run speakers at the same time throughout the day. So you had to pick and choose, which is a horrible idea. People do not like to do that. Mm. They don't want to, they don't want to, you know, pick and choose, but you don't know until you try it. So, um, Long story short, uh, Draplin and Signal Noise, James White, were our two headliners that year. And that helped us get on the map. Like, as soon as you put some names that are, like, bigger names like that in the, the lineup and you start – like, we had big names already. But, like, for some reason that year, it just – it clicked. More people were tweeting about it. Um, and and that I think that really, social media started – playing a more pivotal role in like us getting our name out there. We started messing with social media and actually advertising and stuff. And that year we had a meeting at Iron Man Coffee and this, this uh, good dear friend of mine, Holly Sutherland, she's a, uh, she works over at one of the local TV stations here, channel 38. And she was sitting there with us. She's been part of our team for years, like since the beginning. And we were sitting there trying to go, we need a name that makes sense for us, that becomes our name, our our mark, whatever. We're already two years in. And this third year, we really need to come out with something. That identity. Different, right? What is our identity? And we were going through, the next, some of the names were just awful, bro. <laughs> awful. Like, I remember one of them, and I say this, it's funny now because there's a software that's called this, but I think one of the names was Procreate. And we made <sighs> so many horrible references about that, like how many, how sideways that could go. But um, she was sitting there. She she was talking about uh, how uh, how her she she knits. So that's one of her hobbies. She's a knitter. She makes some kick ass hats and just she's just cool like that. And 
um, very creative lady. And she was sitting there in one of her groups uh, in Atlanta that she goes to, I think it's called like Knitting South. And she's sitting there literally at the table knitting something while we were having a meeting. And she's like, what if we call it Creative South? And we were like, oh my God, there it is. That's the the one. We've been, dude, I'm talking days and days of trying to name this thing over lunches at meetings, whatever. And finally, so like, as soon as she said it, I was like, boom, let's go buy the domain. Well, creativesouth.com wasn't available. It was available, but it was like 500 bucks to get it. And I was like, I can't, dude, I can't afford that. That's, that's a same amount of money to pay for a domain name. And so I went with Creative South GA and that we bought the domain name and that's where we were. And then um, through some help, um, we started getting branding. And I know right, Ryan Hammer took a stab at it. He was our very first one that really kind of like said here and he gave us our very first mark. And then um, it went from there to um, Nick Slater built our peach. And that that's the mark that we had for a long time. And then Bob Ewing came in and did the, the script and that's what we combined it with the peach now. And that's our solidified mark. And that's what we're, we use all the time is, is the script and the peach. So it was, it was fun to watch it unfold. And, but that year we had 200 people show up, you know, you jump from 65 to 200 and it was awesome. I mean, people just had a great time. You know, we, the feedback we got was, was very positive, but it was also one of those things. It's like, all right, we did, we went big. We went from one day to two days. And it went to 200 folks. And it just, it, it never, the vision has never changed. It still has to be about the experience for me. It's, it's, you were saying, you, you know, you want to plan stuff. For me, it's, if I'm trying to plan something, especially like an event like that, how, as, as the person who's putting on, how do you want to, how would you want to feel if you weren't the person that was putting on, but you were the person that was going to the event? Right. So I, look at it through that lens of okay i'm gonna go to this event and i want this is what i want to get out of it this is how i want to feel when i leave this is how i want to talk about it when i leave these are the things i'd like to experience this is the kind of swag i hope i'm going to get and i kind of plan it for that experience right and always keep it in mind that, like the experience is what you've got to make the best part because <laughs> Dude, people huge. pay to be there See, like that's immediately is a massive takeaway. I got to interject real quick for those list, listening. What he's talking sure. about isn't just for event planning. Like if you're selling a product, whatever you're posting to your audience, what's that end result that they're going to care about? Like if you can put yourself in the end user shoes, that's a good user experience. Even if you're just posting like your drawings, like what's in it for someone yeah. else on the other side or you have a product, like speak to that end result and keep that in mind. It's exactly web design, event planning, uh, yeah. any type of product launches. So like, that's a huge, keeping that, that user in mind at the end, like that's massive. Putting even, yourself in their shoes. Even when you're, your human interactions. Yeah. How do you want that person to feel? If it was you on the other side and they were meeting you, how would you want them to feel meeting you? You know, like you, there's all these different things that kind of come into play and it comes back to experiences uh, I just want it to be a good one. You know, I, I want people to feel like, hey, you know, I, I paid this money to be here. I worked hard for this money. And when I leave, man, that was a good value. I had a blast. I, I want to come back and I don't want to stop talking about it. And this is what I got out of it. So that's how I kind of go about like finding the right people to help, finding the right speakers, uh, planning the kind of parties and and just thinking through those kinds of things. That's that's on my end. And I get all the, the people that help me help me get all the little intricate details in order and keep me in check when I'm making a stupid decision or I'm going a little too far outside the box. They're like, Whoa, 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 bring it back in. But, but, um, but yeah, man, that was, that was year three. And so like from three to now, it's just been like, it went from like 200 to 400 to 600 to 800 to a thousand to, you know, to 1200 to back to a thousand to, you know, let's just keep it in 800,000 range. And that, that's kind of where we want to be is like in the 800 to a thousand range. And, you know, I think I could grow up, but like, I don't want to ever lose the intimacy that is, that is the specialness of what it's become because it's gone from like, Hey, I'm, I started this conference to, Hey, we've built a community and that's where we're at. I feel like if I didn't have a single speaker, like if I said, Hey, 2021, no speakers, 300 people would still show up and hang out. Right. Like, and that's, that's what we're looking for. You know, we built the community and we want to keep the community growing and, 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 Anyway, so that's that's that kind of it in a nutshell. So what's the hardest part about creating and sustaining an event like this? One, it's year round. 
too, but yeah. like, how do you make time? How do you keep everyone on the same page? How do you keep everyone aligned with the mission? Man, I, I, so the first part about that is you've got to make sure that you have the right people in the right positions, right? So like we were talking about earlier, finding the people that do things better than you do, right? I've got Peter as my right-hand man. That cat keeps me in check with our finances, make sure that I'm not uh, overthinking things. Del Tondo? Del Tondo, yeah. Peter Del Tondo from Onvold, yeah. And, um, you know, and then we got Andrew, who is just nothing but balls of energy and laughs and const, like literally constant energy. I don't know how he goes like he does, but, you know, he keeps ideas fresh and he keeps me in check with programming, making sure that our programming is flowing and smooth and that we always have really uh, smart ideas for the stage that are super entertaining that maybe I wouldn't have thought of. He's bringing those ideas to the table. And then, you know, Lenny's in there helping make sure the vendor hall experience is one that everybody takes away going, man, I really want to go back in there and buy gear and, and cultivating that experience by make sure that the right vendors are in place for their, for their audience, you know? So, and, and those are just a few people like, you know, Diane's always in, in the mix for helping me with uh, volunteers and doing a stand up job of getting those folks um, doing it. And then my buddy, Matt, I was telling you about earlier, um, he helps me get all the parties squared away. He's the guy that's at the bridge all day long, setting it up, making sure the vendors are in place, tearing it down. Um, he's, he's been that. Um, and then I, Krauss and I work together and, and he is literally my, my, um, my shadow for the whole weekend because he knows that people are trying to come in, come in and, and get my, you know, kind of stop me every five feet. So he's the guy I'm like, Hey, can you go make sure that da, 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 whatever it is, is getting done while I'm here doing whatever it is I'm doing. And so huge helpers all around. And <clears throat> those are just a few, we have so many more people that, that help out over the years, especially with volunteers and stuff. But um, first, you know, put the right people in place. You know, that's the first part of it. And then I think the, the hardest part, um, in, and, you know, you were saying, how do we keep them all on the same page? You know, we do things like, okay, every summer we meet up in one location and plan. So we take a whole weekend, get together in person and plan speakers, budget, you know, parties. We just kind of get like the guts of stuff done in one weekend. So we have a really solid game plan. And then <clears throat> most of the rest of our planning literally is done in Slack for the entire year. <laughs> so from August to now, we're in Slack, you know, every day, pretty much updating, making updates. And then for my team that's local, like, you know, all my local folks that are here who help me with logistics and, and you know, the food and whatnot, we meet on uh, every Wednesday night because my kids go to church, go to youth. So like I drop them at church or mom drops them at church. I go to the coffee shop. So like from five to nine, I'm at Starbucks and I have people just, it's like, it used to be we all just meet in person, but then I don't want to be, I want to be very cool about people's schedules. So what I do now is I'm like, Hey, from five to nine, I'll be there. If you need to call in, cause you can't make it great. If you just want to drop in, give your update and go, that's fine too. If you want to sit and hang out, that's fine too. So we just sit there. And then when it's nine o'clock, I go pick up my kids from church and then go home and do family. So those those four things are are some of the key points on of making it run smoothly and keeping everybody on the same page. As far as pain points, you know, um, finding a great speaker lineup is always an issue and budget. You know, you got to have money to make this thing happen. So sponsorship and and just funding is a big a big player in the stress of is this going to be as awesome and such experience as we can make it. And, and the best way I can tell you is like, just be a good steward of what you got, you know? Uh, and I, that's why having these good people in my corner always keep me grounded on, Oh, you know what? That's a fantastic idea. But can we do that? Can we have the money for that. And it's like, you're like the big, you're like the Steve I'm jobs like the and you got a, guy, right? and you got the Steve Wozniak <laughs> behind you exactly. with the crew, keeping everything in check. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's, and I think that's, that's great because, uh, it, it ends up being a good mix of the two, which kind of makes the experience like it's supposed to be. But I'm always going to go, no. And like, if I really feel very passionate about an idea, I'm like, let's do it and we'll figure it out. And then I'm like, somebody go find a sponsor for this. This has to happen. Or I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I'm paying for it from my, out of my own pocket. I don't give a crap. I need this to happen. And sometimes they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> but most of the time they're like, no, nah, this has to you know, keep it. Come on, man. Keep it real. And uh, it ends up being. Uh, amazing, dude! I, last year with the, the the video games and the, I mean, who gets to make an arcade at a barn? Like, right? Like, who gets to do that? Like, we got to do. That. Why you got to rub it, it in? Because I missed that one, man. Why you got to rub insane. it in? 
broke my streak. I know. I'll tell you, the stage itself, just the stage, like, you heard about it, right? Like yeah, I remember, dude, I was creeping on, I was vicariously living through everyone that week. Who I was haven't attending, laughed man. that hard in, in, in ages, and, and, and that's the other key point, man. Whenever this crew gets together, no matter what we're doing, if it's planning or just going through life together, these folks keep me laughing constantly, which keeps my motivation going in a positive direction. I, I mean, the other day, we were trying, I'm trying to do this new thing. Uh, and you were asking me, I juggle lots of stuff. Well, I wanted to start a YouTube channel this year for this cool project I want to do. <laughs> and we're, you know, and I'm, and, you know, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I'm still going to try to shoot one or two episodes because I think it's fun. And I was like, all right, guys, I need a name. I, I don't, I can't think of a good name for the show. And so like the stuff that starts coming out of their mouths, is so not safe for it. It's just, it was the horriblest. Like I cannot call it that y'all. That is not even funny. And but like the whole time we're all hysterically laughing together. I think of Lenny being the instigator of for a lot of that stuff. He's such an instigator, man. He's such an instigator. But as soon as he does it, then everybody talks on the gravy train. I'm like, guys, I can't use any of these names. Are y'all serious? It was so much fun though. We we just laughed for for 15, 20 minutes. And so anyway. Um, I hope that answered your question. I got off topic a little bit. No, no, that's that's great. Like I think right now for anybody who wants to get into like event planning, this is a gold mine right now. And then just inside hustling in general of being surrounded by the right type of people, you know, and, and, and figuring out along the way, throw yourself in the fire and figure it out. Like all the principles and philosophies that like I learned from experience that I talk about here is like exactly what you're talking about just in the awesome. field of event planning. So very, very parallel. Um, well, let's hype up Creative South right now. Year 10. Yeah. What can people expect this time around? I'm back so, in action. I, I, as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as like tickets went on sale for those super early, love is blind, whatever, like that Saturday at the yeah. end of the conference, I was creeping, dude. I got my ticket ASAP right there. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I'm I wasn't missing two years in a row. Ticket sales are still going on and then uh, early bird ends on the seventh. I believe. Man, this so is in March now. So this is March. Um, that this episode's we just need out. To sell tickets, you know, like, come on, let's sell out. Let's be, uh, let's be completely sold out. This is going to uh, sell out. No doubt. I hope, I hope that's the, the, the ask, you know, but it's, it's, uh, I thought, okay, year 10, we've done so many things over the years that have been fun, have kept it small and Southern, have kept the small town vibe going with the stage sets. And I'm like, what can we do for year 10 that keeps that same vibe, but also brings in everybody that's ever been to celebrate this achievement. And I'm like, a family reunion. We got to have a family reunion. We got to bring back folks we haven't seen since year three. You know, we got to call those people up and, and say, hey, you need to be here, man, just to celebrate with us. And and I think that's that's my goal is to, to this is my ask to people who are already coming, you know, call the folks you haven't seen in a while and say, hey, come back. I'd love to see you this. I think come celebrate with us. And just try to bring back past attendees, past speakers, past uh, MCs, just people who have been before and just come celebrate this milestone. And what better way to do that than have a family reunion? And family reunions are super crazy anyway because everybody has their own family reunion stories. So we've asked people to, hey, online, you know, in our in our email blast, it's like share your story with us. We want to hear how has how has Chris South become your family? How has it impacted your life? And and share that so we can share that with the, the rest of the family. And so things to expect is, you know, we've added a whole nother day of programming. So instead of kicking off on Friday morning, like we normally do, we'll kick off on Thursday morning and that day will end up at the bridge party. So instead of us coming together to begin with at the bridge party, we will end the night one at the bridge party. And um, so that's different. We've added a little bit of nighttime programming on Friday night. Um, we added the dot theater for the students. And um, we're going to do some student stuff there for them. Um, and let's see. Uh, and then so Friday, normal Friday programming would be like um, you've got, you know, your speakers, speakers going on yeah. from like eight to six. Right. But at noon. So apparently I'm still having to take the stage. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take the stage at like 11 on Friday and, and I'm going to close this out for the day as far as speakers for the daytime. And so from like noon to like sometime in the afternoon, we're going to have a family reunion, food, music, games. Th think of like if a family reunion, a field day had a baby, what would that feel like? Right. Creative South style with all of us wearing like a really awesome family reunion t-shirt. 
so we got the barbecue going. Hey, we're gonna have a family reunion. That's what we're gonna do, bro. Um, come on. Yeah, I know. Barbecue going. I, I had to. I had. I mean, and, I knew it was gonna be also, there. Also, vegetarian, and vegan. Okay, I'll make sure you all get to eat. I promise. You guys do a good job of that. It's gonna be. It's gonna be well rounded for everybody. But yeah, um, it's gonna be a big barbecue and and just live music and and drinks and and games and just a fellowship, man. We're gonna have a couple hours of just being in a family. And so I think a lot of people are going to have a good time just, just doing that. And then um, that night we'll pick back up with workshops in the evening and also um, workshops in the evening. All right. workshop, there are workshop times from in different parts of the day. Right. Like, man, the reason we did that, we're like, well, okay. Instead of having them all in one day, what if we spread them out through the weekend? That's this will be a little different, but also people hang out super late and then we always start super early. So why not start at 10 o'clock in the morning instead of eight o'clock in the morning? We want people to be able to sleep in and also get up and just kind of get up. No, I was always hurting on those workshops. Different. I go hard I on those. I go hard every I night know. when I'm there. Every night, every night. Oh, man, <laughs> People so don't know, like the parties here at Creative South are next level. The conversation is next level. The speakers are next level. That. The workshops, like it's the whole entire, the whole entire experience for sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be fun, man. And so that's kind of, the deal, we also um, opened it up to having um, community-led events. So you've got people from our community that are going to be leading um, fun events. And I know that one that I'm helping out with is uh, Sean Ferguson. Uh, I don't know if you know Sean or not. He he did a workshop with Vaughn a while back about illustration. Okay, yep, um, yep, yep. I know you're talking about. Big yep, he did a co thing. Yep, yep. Um, we're going to uh, – he's going to host a, a barbecue, uh, kind of come learn how to cook ribs. So we're going to be out there cooking ribs and hanging out one day with some smokers and some sides and just kind of like, it's just going to be just a little barbecue kind of get together. And um, then you'll have like drink and draw and there's like a, a women's group and like, a, um, I have to go look at the list. There's like s- several community led events that are going to be, um, you know, by the community for the community. And, and those will be a, a new addition this year. That'll be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's kind of I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Before we go into rapid fire mode, and I'll be sure to like in the intro or the outro, make sure I'm plugging like speakers and workshops, just really, really, you know, uh, uh, driving home what people can expect. But since this show is fuel for your mind and creative grind, perspective podcast for a reason, we all look through life from a different lens, but I want to like give some paradigm shifts with the guests I bring on here. So like, what are your internal and external sources of fuel that just keep your fire burning that gets you just pumped? to get up each day, to keep pursuing what you love to do, even when it's not convenient, especially when you're a busy dude. Oh man. I mean, you, anybody with a family knows what I'm talking about. Like your kids, man, like, you know, you got kids or family at home. You're, you're grinding for them to provide, mm-hmm. to, to have a better life than you had to just, uh, you know, bring them some joy. Um, and I think, you know, that's one of the things that keeps me going. Uh, the other thing is, like, I love what I do, right? It's not just like, hey, I'm coming to work, need a paycheck. Even my nine to five here at Affleck, like, I don't just come here to get a paycheck and go home. I absolutely love this team. This team is freaking hilarious. We laugh all the time. We, we work hard. We play hard. And the work that we're doing, the, the, the help that comes from the work we're doing, when it help, whether it's helping sick kids or helping people get bills paid when they don't have the, the funds, you know, like that kind of stuff is important. So like the help factor from working here is awesome. And that keeps me, that, that's a driving force for me. Like, Hey, I get to come here. I get to make some cool stuff, but the help, the, the serving aspect comes back into play. But then also like, you know, like for me, like, man, I, matter of faith, I, you know, the Lord keeps me going, dude. And I, I look at it like this, like he's provided this opportunity and I think he's provided this opportunity to be a part of creative South and to run a studio and to have a family. And I need to be a good steward of those things. And I need to like be, be um, thankful that I have those opportunities that were given to me. And I know where all that comes from. So that's a big driving force too, is that, you know, uh, I, I've got these blessings in my life that I, I'm, I'm tasked with taking care of, you know? Um, and I, I don't know, man, I look at it. We, we get to do this for a living you know like it's kind of like get to create for a living what? dude like that is How the dopest cool. like, thing it's in like the world the best job on the planet you know and and people always ask me well, what would you do if you know if you weren't a designer what would your job be hey don't ruin this question <laughs> oh you got this all right i won't i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait for it 
No, man, I, I align so much with all of that. Like, especially the family portion is like, dude, I grind so hard to like change my family tree, you know? Why Give, not? Like, yeah. And why no. not me? You know, like Dave Ramsey says, change your, yeah. change your family tree. You know, I want to do it why financially not? and just yep. everything around it. Just show them oh, like, yeah. this is what grinding is. This is, this yeah. is what you can manifest from doing something you love. So, uh, very much vibe to that dude. Uh, you still there? You look frozen. Yeah, I'm here. No, okay, yeah, cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, I'm good. Uh, my bad. <laughs> I'm hungry. I've been doing this fasting. So I'm fasting. Oh, like intermittent, intermittent fasting. fasting. Yeah. How, how long working. is, uh, how long is your, been, your gap? 16? 16 hours. Yeah. Ooh. So you like yeah. eight to noon? Eight to noon. Ooh. Yeah, I'm done it right now, dude. It's time to right eat. now, I'm, I'm right now I'm on eat. that eight to ten <laughs> life right now because man, okay. I, I, shed, I was doing keto. I shed it uh, yeah. like ten pounds doing keto and intermittent yes. fasting within like two weeks. So I was like, ah, yeah, I'm down go. to twelve in, in two weeks. Dang, it's no joke. But regardless, yeah. this is rapid fire. Here we go. Right, if go, you were on death, if you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Oh, pepperoni, extra pepperoni, crispy pepperoni. Anywhere specific. Oh, uh, no, just good. not well. La Poma's, I guess. Is good. I don't really know. Like, if we're doing local, let's go with La Poma's. Their pizza is pretty dope. All right. Top places in Columbus for those attending to go and eat on breaks. And shout out to oh Iron God. Bank Coffee just for like morning spot coffee drinks. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, Midtown Coffee, um, uh, Fountain City. Let's see, for eating at Mabella's Salt. Uh, what is it? Salt cellar, um, the loft. Oh man, there's so many new. What's the black cow there. one? Black cow's good eats. Um, What's like the diner one? The flip side or something like that? It's not there anymore. It's a donut shop. And eh, what? Eh, that was eh. a staple for me. Like, well, what's the pizza place? Hot dogs. What's the pizza place again? Um, uh, Picasso pizzas. Down Picasso there. late That's night slices. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, if I'm over downtown to eat a meal, like 11th and Bay, Epic, like go to a, like go to a nice sit down, right? There's several really nice sit downs, right? Um, grab and go places are, you know, yeah, just as good, but that's just me. All right. Over the last 10 years, what are three memorable talks that just come to mind? Oh my God. Um, Alan Peters. No that's fine. Alan Peters. This is such a good story. I love that cat. Um, uh, Charles S. Anderson's talk. Yeah, fantastic. that was that especially was the end where he got the like and he, up he, and he broke like, the Port oh, Buller review, oh, man, and he just so, let it out, it like kept so it super good. real. That was wrong. Was so good. And then uh, let's see, let me think, let me think, because uh, I don't get to see very many. That's the problem. Um, golly, what is? There's so many, dude. I mean, you mean, dude, you can never go wrong with like your, you know, the ones you typically see. But I, I can't think of another one, man. I like I said, I catch, I catch so very few talks while I'm there, like little bits and pieces. But those are the ones I remember from backstage that were just like, seriously, that's insane. Um, it's like I want people to know what to expect for some of these people, you know, coming on the lineup yeah, this that, year. There's, there's so many. Like, you know, it, you're asking the wrong guy because I'm, I'm putting out fires for y'all are watching people talk. All right. Well, here's that one question. If you were reincarnated, what would your new career path be outside of design, marketing, branding, illustration? I'd be a planning? chef. Chef? Yeah, man. Because look, I love food. There's your YouTube channel. The <laughs> That's exactly what it's going to be. What would I, your I chef love... name be? Oh my God, Lee. I don't know. I don't know. What would you call me if, I was, if you were in my kitchen? Oh, man. I just love food, and I think creatively. Chef Big Plate. Awesome. I don't know. Big, big Plate. <laughs> I like that. Chef Big Plate. I like that. Yeah, I, I, the game plan for me for retirement is to open up a barbecue restaurant that's only open Thursday and Friday from 11 to 2 until we sell out. And just do top-tier Texas-style, you know, fatty cup brisket, you know. Okay. So, ends, the baked beans, you know. Fun fact about me, outside of pizza being, like, top – Every of time my I food think of pyramid. Pizza, I think of you. Right. Good. I want to own that brain space, but you close own, number two, close number two is barbecue, man. Like I love uh -huh. barbecue. So for you, barbecue, uh, what's the best? Brisket, pork, chicken, uh, ribs, what's your go-to? So 10 years ago, I would have been like Georgia style pork barbecue, you can't beat it, whatever. And then I got cultured. <laughs> uh, Texas style all the way, 
brisket, fatty cut, burnt ends, in your beans, you know, but I'm still a huge fan of the fact that Georgia has stew, like right where I'm from here. So Brunswick stew is a huge big deal. So when I go to a, a place, I want to make sure their brisket's on point and melts in your mouth. Their ribs are like just competition style, p- pull off the bone, the right bite consists all that. And that they've got great sauces and good and really good beans and really good burn ins and somebody has a good stew. And, and so if they don't have all those things, great. But if like the brisket's on point, then usually the rest of the stuff falls into place. And there's so many good places that you can eat at around here for good barbecue. You're not going to find that brisket level of brisket here unless you go to Atlanta, in my opinion. Right. Well, there might be one place, I could, one or two places I can think of that are pretty good. Crossroads Barbecue has pretty decent brisket. And that's in Smith Station. If you're here and you want to eat good. Tommy's out in Ellerslie has fantastic ribs and chicken and, and just a great atmosphere. Um, it's about 20 minutes outside of Columbus, but like locally, you know, I grew up on countries. That's more of a meat and three, but fantastic barbecue there. And then uh, if you're here in town, you want to get some a good sandwich, go over to uh, River Road, uh, has a little barbecue place um, uh, that is awesome. And yeah, there's just, man, there's, anyway, I'm going to have to go I'm smash after this episode. My gosh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so starving. <laughs> I'm starving. Okay. Last one. <clears throat> Where yeah. can people go to follow you online, support you, register for Creative South? Like, give us the goods, give us the scoop. Sure. So uh, you can follow me at Bucket Eight Two Six on pretty much all the social media. I think Facebook's like Mike Jones Eight Two Six, but uh, the rest of it's Bucket Eight Two Six on Insta and uh, and Twitter and uh, Dribble. And then um, you can find my company at Sir Studios. You can find most of my work at HugNets.com and if you want to buy a ticket to Creative South, it's just creativesouth.com. You can just buy a ticket offline like right, right there on the site. And I'm going to be there too. So come and kick it with me. <laughs> come on. All you guys Let's come go. and listen in, man. I, I, I beat the drum about this conference all the I time, dude. It. I, I, I'd say about mm-hmm. probably 75% of the guests that have been on the show have all stemmed from something related to this conference. My whole creative nice. career has exploded because of this conference. So just know like I'm a walking billboard for you guys, no matter what conference I go to, like this one changed the game for me. So uh, I I owe you so much, man. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Thank Uh, you for the kind words. No problem. Love you, brother. Let's keep in touch and I'll see you in a couple months. Actually, when this comes out, it'll be in a month. Woo. Oh my God. Don't, don't rush it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, man. All right. Go get some barbecue. Peace out. Yeah, brother. Be good. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.